Okay, continuing on with this, and put that off to the side. First, we're going to take out our selective shim as well as our bearing. Okay, the bearing is going to go black side up. Now, we want to take a quick look here because you always want to measure this going, coming apart to see what size shim you do have. This happens to be a 106,000 shim. So that's going to be in information that you're going to need. And you can refer to the specification section as far as setting the end play of the unit. But that's going to be the shim that you're going to need to replace in order to perform that task. Then first thing that we do is we can go ahead and grab the input shaft and we take out the C1 clutch. C1 clutch assembly is pretty much uh, going to consist of uh, the, just one clutch pack, the input shaft which can be separated, and you'll see all the details of this in the sub-assembly sub section. Next we have the C2, C3 clutch. You got to get a good grip on this, okay, so it doesn't give you a whole lot of territory to work with, but it's a good handle in this area. Basically, we do want to inspect this drum. Uh, there is a seal in this area here, bearing and seal type combination. If there is a rip or if the seal is uh, messed up, then we've got a problem. We've got to replace this drum or we have to service this bearing seal assembly. Now, there's a bearing and a thrust washer that we want to uh, account for. So again, those are two components. We'll uh, talk about that more on assembly. So the C3, C4 clutch pack, there's uh, the C3 is the ones on the top. The C2, rather, is the ones on the bottom. So C3, C2 clutch pack assembly. Uh, that's going to be covered in our sub-assembly section. Then next, we take out the uh, C2 hub ring gear. This is going to be the planetary number one ring gear. So we're going to have a bearing on top of there on that surface. I'm going to put that off to the side. And we have planetary number one. Basically, this is going to have a captured bearing. So the bearing is going to be captured in an oil wear. So this oil wear can be pressed off of this. So again, if this needs to be surfaced, serviced, we can actually uh, get this pressed off and it needs to be pressed back on, just to keep that in mind. Next, we have the uh, C3 hub. So this is the C3 clutch hub and it's also going to be uh, planetary number one sun gear. So again, we're going to check the bushings Make sure that uh, we don't have excessive wear on the bushings and the sun gear. Next, we have a bearing and a spacer type assembly. Now this is going to be very important to see in this area here, a real quick view. Uh, there's a splined area here when we get to planetary number two where we're sitting here and we see these splines, we know something's happening there. Basically, there's this uh, little raised area uh, that's going to be installed as like a fiber spacer. It's got a wide flat spot on the, on the top, then a narrower flat bottom on the uh, flat surface on the bottom. So again, it kind of raises it like a shelf and it lines up here. We got little splines that are going to actually line up with that. So that's kind of going to raise this bearing surface up like that. So again, note that the cup, the bearing is down and the spacer has to be in place. Otherwise, the uh, bearings and the, the actual ring gear that's above here will uh, actually start to scrape up against the mechanisms in here. So again, we want to make sure that these are in place. Next, we're going to take out number two planetary. Here's our number two planetary. Uh, this assembly can uh, be removed and disassembled as necessary. So if there's something wrong with the planetary or the shell, these two components can come apart. We do have a snap ring that is in this area right here. I'm gonna pop it real quick and show you. Basically, here's the snap ring. 
and the planetary separates from the actual shell. Now this shell is going to be driven at input housing speed. So just to keep that in mind, with that shell driven at input housing speed, basically we're driving the carrier at input housing speed. So that's going to be an all-in-one type of situation there as far as uh, the rotation of components inside this unit. So we're going to just leave that off to the side here. Next, we have a housing to take out. This is going to be our C4 clutch housing. It's going to be anchored to the case. And the C4 housing, all we have to do is remove a snap ring. There's no beefy snap ring inside of this unit at all. So we can get our snap ring, ply uh, snap ring screwdriver on this. Get it underneath the ledge, kind of pry it out. And it's going to pop out a lot like the 2-4 housing on a 604. So once you get the last piece out, you'll hear it pop like that. And then we have the snap ring. This is going to be a larger diameter snap ring that snaps into the case here. And then we can remove the C4 clutch housing. So that's the housing. It has a molded piston. Very easy to service, basically. That's our molded piston. And we're going to want to change that. Also, another thing that I did forget to, uh, almost forgot to mention, we do have an ID that's going to allow us to actually index this back into the case. So this little notch right here is actually going to line up with the groove in the case right here. So again, this is going to be the deep, deepest groove in the case here. So it's really... Uh, no way that we can get it in any other way. So if we have it turned the wrong way, basically that's going to keep us honest and that's going to get us where we're supposed to be because the feed hole is right here and we have an orifice at the uh, 6 o'clock position which is at the top of the uh, housing. Put that off to the side. Then we have the rest of the components, the ply components. We're going to have our Belleville spring that's going to come out next. This is going to be our return spring. This, is, this ledge is going to actually sit inside the case here in the step that you see. And that's going to actually uh, put pressure on this piston to return it back into the uh, housing. So that's our return for that assembly. And these are our apply, this is our apply plate. So these fingers are going to actually engage on the uh, piston itself and actually apply the C4 clutch which is in the case. Now the next thing we do is we're going to take out the C4 clutch hub which is going to be the number two and number three sun gears as well. So we got the number two, number three sun gears uh, all as one unit. So just to keep that part in mind, they are held together by a snap ring here. So they're splined together. They can be serviced separately for that reason. So if we got tooth damage here, we can pop this apart and we can handle our business accordingly and replace the component in question here. If you get the right size snap ring pliers, of course. Sometimes I do that. What do they say? Get the right tool for the right job, right? No, I have the right tool for the right job. <laughs> okay, I just didn't control the snap ring. My apologies. So again, this comes apart pretty readily. Again, so you can service each sun gear separately. That's the only purpose behind that. There's otherwise, they could be uh, formed as one unit or one assembly. And there is no clock position with this, by the way. So let's put this back together. Put that off to the side. And here we have the C4 clutches. And we can reach in and take those out. And notice we have a wave and we have a 
four frictions, four steels. Now the steel that is closest to the wave is going to be thicker. We're going to go over the details on the assembly portion of this uh, presentation. Next, we take out the C5 clutch hub. C5 clutch hub is also going to be a ring gear for the number three planetary. So the ring gear for the number three planetary is going to be actually removable out of this hub assembly. So there's tooth damage, we can actually replace the ring gear. If there's hub damage, we can replace the hub. So that's a very um, uh, versatile, uh, useful setup as far as the way they put this together. There is a thrust bearing. Uh, notice that the thrust bearing does have ears. The ears are on the cup side, and the cup side is going to go down. And basically, if you put it on the housing here, it's going to feel uh, correct one way. It's not going to feel correct the other way. So again, very directional oriented. You can't really make a mistake with that as far as putting that on wrong and having it function correctly. Next, we have our C5 clutch assembly. C5 clutch assembly, we have a snap ring that's going to be in here. Snap ring is uh, going to retain the actual pressure plate first. So in comparison to the C4 clutch piston retainer, there's our diameter difference. So there's a notable difference. You can't make a mistake as far as um, what goes where. So the C5 uh, clutch uh, Clutch, uh, clutch pack retainer is going to be a smaller diameter. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and grab the number three planetary and those clutches come out right with it. I like doing stuff like that. <laughs> Makes for an easier job. But basically our wave is going to go into the case first. The piston is in the extension housing, so the piston is going to be pushing up from the bottom, a lot like an Allison type application. So that piston is pushing up from the bottom on this wave, and we have a thicker steel, which we're going to go through the details um, on the reassembly. Three steels, three clutches that are going to be involved in this clutch setup for the C5 clutch pack. Finally, we got the last planetary going to be the fourth, fourth planetary. Planetary number four. This is going to be our output planetary carrier assembly. Notice it's really beefy. Uh, this is going to be where most of our reduction comes from. A lot of our output comes from. So basically uh, this is going to be the last planetary in the unit. Also our output shaft is going to spline to that. But before we get to that, we have a sun gear that's going to stay in the case. And this is going to be our Planetary 4 sun gear, which goes into this section right here with a bearing with a hat. The hat's going to, the raised edge is going to go in towards the sun gear. So when we're putting this back together, you'll see how it all goes together. You notice the output shaft isn't out yet. Okay, this isn't, this isn't the output shaft right here. So just keep that in mind. This shaft is facing up. And we do have a bearing in this location. Again, it's going to be a capture type bearing. So in other words, I can't just take this out. I'd have to remove this oil shield and there's a lot to this, but this is serviceable if this bearing is bad, but it's going to take some work and you need to, you have to get this uh, oil wear back in because again, lube oil is going to be very critical to maintain in this unit. Now, with that in mind, the last component we have is going to be our output shaft. Our output shaft is going to pretty much look like that. Just a little nubby shaft there. Now basically that is going to spline into our output carrier like so. So again, uh, when we're going back together, uh, we can't just uh, flip it over and you know, try to you know, do one of those numbers because that's what's going to happen. So again, there's going to be a special tool that we're going to introduce as far as allowing us to put this together uh, proactively as an assembly or partial assembly. Now, one more bearing. This bearing is in the bottom of the case. Basically, it's going to go cup side up in the C5 clutch housing area, and it's going to ride on the output shaft in that direction. So basically, you drop this into the case first on assembly, 
and into that pocket and then you can lower the gear train in on top of that. So we're going to flip this unit and with this unit inverted, basically we're going to see a couple things. First we're going to see an O-ring and this is a Corvette version so uh, not all versions are going to have this O-ring but Corvette is going to have this because we have a differential assembly bolted directly to the back of this so that's what this huge flange is for the differential bolts directly to this so we take this o-ring off this is going to be something that we have to remember that we're going to have to service it's going to come in the kit plus there is dual seals okay we have a uh, looks like a oil lube reten retention seal as well as a regular output seal so again we've got a dual level there that we want to be aware of and want to change both of those seals and we have a bearing that we want to make sure that we inspect as well. Now let's take off this extension housing here. Extension housings are going to come in a couple different flavors. So this again is going to be the Corvette version. So the one that you're working on might not look like this. And there's six bolts that we have to pull out of here. When you pull these out, it almost looks like you can possibly pull threads with this. So be aware of that if you're um, using impact. Um, boy, it makes me nervous when I feel bolts, bolt threads like that. And we just lift this directly out. And this is going to be our extension housing slash C5 clutch housing. So this is going to be an assembly that we're going to go over and review in the sub assembly section of this presentation. And then finally, we have our gasket which is going to need to, be, need to be replaced. And now as far as uh, for maintenance purposes here, uh, you are going to be washing the case. So you do want to remove the parking pole. Here are the parking pole, this little uh, lever and rod, they kind of stay in place on their own if you don't bother it too much. But what's going to happen is with this uh, assembly and the wash, it's going to want to jolt around a little bit. It's going to want to chuck around. So we do want to get this out of here and it takes a little bit of finagling to get it to move but it'll be your luck that it'll finagle just the right way in the parts washer it'll end up at the bottom of all that hot water soup and then you'll be looking for this as well as the spring and the lever so you don't want that to happen in your life so with that in mind we're going to put that off to the side and basically remove the rest of the seals in the case. Uh, we got the manual lever seal and also the uh, cooler line seals. And once we remove those seals, the case is ready to be washed and serviced and inspected accordingly.